In this video, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still kind of sick, so if I clear my throat, I apologize. Um, in this video, um, I basically just want to discuss, um, you know, I've discussed this many times before, but I just want to discuss a little, a little bit briefly the main point of Husserl's anti-psychologism, and that's <clears throat> um, in most of the chapters of uh, his Prolegomena to Pure Logic, which is the... Um, intro, I guess, to the logical investigations, and I guess um, <clears throat> what I've been doing is I've did a, have, have a couple videos on the Prolegomena um, 2, actually, and I'm going to be filming, um, I'm going to do a little, dis little discussion about chapter 11. I'm skipping the whole part of it that is about psychologism because I think I can discuss it pretty well. I don't want to, I don't want to go into the very multifaceted, different, really discussions and, and arguments he has against it, but I just want to go, I just want to go over very, very briefly the, <clears throat> the main point of, or the main argument he has against it, and talk a little bit about not only what he's doing in the Prolegomena and the logical investigations, but also even a little bit the, his book, the book that, that, that he wrote later, Experience and, and Judgment. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, basically what, what psych psychologism is, is it's um, it's identifying non it's like th identifying the non psychological phenomena, you know things things in the world ob objective things, and identifying those non psychological things with things that are psychological, explaining um, explaining a real objective phenomena, um, you know that that are not really that psychological at all, with psychological answers I guess and. There are, there have, there were a lot of theorists before Husserl, um, who kind of went about it this way, and went, you know, kind of uh, thought about philosophy in that kind of lens of, you know, thinking about and trying to explain objective reality, ob ob trying to explain objectively real things through psychological phenomena, and, um, you know, um, like... I, it's just you know I could I could very I could give very different very many examples which is like that's mostly what it is it's um, in his personal opinion Husserl's is that that's what they're doing they're taking non psychological things and think thinking about them in psychological ways um, you know um, think about things with the psychological lens you know um, <clears throat> and uh, you know the obviously I think that the it's so like the um, person who's, who has the stance of the, of the psychologism obviously thinks that many objectively real things can be explained through um, psychological phenomena, and that is not Husserl's opinion on this. Um, he thinks more that, there that first of all, he thinks that logic is a normative practice. It's a, um, if you read Theological Investigations and his later work, Experience and, and Judgment, um, you will kind of understand why, you know, logic, why, why logic for him is a normative practice or normative, um, discipline, he says. Uh, he has part, he has a couple sections in the Prologomena to Pure Logic about where he says, where he states specifically that logic is a normative thing. Um, and I guess he's kind of has the opinion that, um, that logic confines the content of, of, of the objectively real things. Um, you know, he has, in the, in the logical investigations as well as the, it was, well as experience and judgment, he has an epistemology of, and a philosophy of science, which is through a phenomenological, um, view, viewpoint. Um, and he thinks, he kind of views everything that we see, uh, you know, um, as a logical thing, you know, with, with that, that logic is, that, that logic, you know, the way, the way logic is, you know, um, you know, understanding the logical relations and logical states of affairs, you know, logic is the way in which we understand everything else. Uh, I, I have a video on experience and, and judgment where I, you know, I go over various parts of that, of that book, because I read the whole book last, uh, Last or last January or fe February, and I in, in that end of it, it's about a half hour video. I go over various parts of it and kind of understand and kind of 
discuss where he's, where he's coming from. So if you want a more in-depth discussion about experience and judgment, you can, you can go there, and it's, it's in my phenomenology playlist on this, on this channel. Um, <clears throat> and it's saying, it's just putting psychological perspectives on like regular things that, that philosophers talk about. You know, it's, you know, um, typical problems like the mind-body problem, you know, uh, typical problems about, about metaphysics and epistemology. Um, from the psychologist, from the person who, who is of the viewpoint of psychologism would try to explain those things and understand those things uh, um, with, with psych psychological perspectives and trying to explain r real things, um, you know, through psychology, I guess. Um, Cyril states that the theoretical foundations of logical, practical, normative disciplines are not psychological. He says that there's a the, the, that there is a unity in science, and that we can come to a unity of knowing it, which is you know coming towards you know hitting upon those laws of of, of nature, and talking and, you know talking about you know building up theories and move, moving towards more knowledge from there, and that is the reason that's you know a very vague way of discussing a very, like a it's kind of like a very you know. You know, in the video, I'm going to do a video about the chapter 11 of the Prolegomena, which is uh, about the, the the idea of pure logic. But um, <clears throat> to explain his viewpoint briefly, Husserl's, um, it's mostly to say that <clears throat> through understanding the world in logical ways, you know, in logical ways being meaning like talking about relations, laws of nature, actually, which are really, you know, what we would think of today as, me as, as metaphysical things, um, st states of affairs, um, those things, and that's, but that's, you know, facts, you know, that's, that's the way we understand the world, but that's actually a really, it's a logical, those are logical relations, those are logical ways of understanding, of, of understanding things, because, um, <clears throat> in predicate logic, which comes from Frege, um, you know, um, if you understand, if you try to, if you, you if you try to, um, to, uh, give the relation of, of, um, saying that three is greater than two, you know, we would assign little constants, you know, um, um, uh, you know, we would say A is three and B is two, we would put L A B because, or, or G A B saying that, which is like the, it's a two place predicate, which says that, um, <clears throat> And we would put either a universal or a no. We we wouldn't put a a quantifier on, on it because it's a constant. Um, <clears throat> uh, but it, it would be just just G A B because it's talking about a, it's a logical relation though. Um, and if you understand if you understand predicate logic, you know, um, uh, like that's I guess that's if you if you understand pre, if you understand predicate logic, you can you can you can, you can understand. How relations of the world, and facts, and states of affairs, and stuff like that, um, are logical things. Those metaphysical things are logical things, really, and uh, <clears throat> that's really what it is. Um, and that's the way Husserl. No, that's the way Husserl understands it. Is that um, we come, you know, lo that logic confines the content that we that we come, that we, that we gain, you know, through, we, we get, um, a theory of science, which is the way that we, is like a, a model or a schematic for building up knowledge, and the logic is normative, it, because it confines that, um, <clears throat> so, this, that's why basically that, that the theoretical foundations of logical, practical, normative, the, the normative discipline of logic, basically, they're not, it's not a it's not a psychological thing. It's more objectively real than real than that. And his phenomenology is basically that it's kind of it's not it's not it's not realist. It's not idealist, but it's kind of both. Uh, if you understand the, the phenomenological epoche or the bracketing <coughs> of the three different kinds of that, uh, <coughs> excuse me. That's basically 
um, what the what the bracketing or what the epoche is, it's saying that we're not going to go into inquiries about the mind dependence or mind independence of the the entities that that are given to us. The you know if I see a, sta a stapler or, or a printer, I'm not going to you know that's weird examples, but I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to inquire if if I if I um if I adhere to the epoche, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go into inquiries of, as to whether this, the stapler is objectively real or su or su or only subjectively real, you know, or whether it's mind dependent or mind independent, um, you know, and you know, it, there, it's for the the you know this is this is you know something that it's it's not it's not inherently phenomenological yet, but it, it does have that, and. Basically, um, what was I going to say? Um, you know, um, basically, there is there are things have ideality, but he he's saying that you know there's more objective reality than just thinking of things as merely as merely, merely psychological. Um, also, um, yeah, he's just been saying that there is more object, there's more ob objectivity than than what can be than than what can be explained by the the psychological things. Logical rules are not based upon psychological laws. The logical logic, the the normative discipline, is not is not is not explained by things psychological. Um, um, the laws of logic are able to be known. Um, a priori, basically, um, <clears throat> and a priori means independent of empirical um, content. Um, and if if they can be known a priori, that's basically just you know um, you know you, you you can understand you know the ways things are related you know the, like the simple relations of things before actually experiencing something. Um, if logical laws were psych were psych were psychological laws, you know that's another thesis of of psychologism is that logical laws are psychological laws, um, and if they were that way, Husserl says, logical laws would uh, would reference um, psychological entities and psych and psychological facts. Um, he's saying, you know, like he says here that truths are. Obje uh, that our through truths are objective. We can come to knowledge through having a theory of science or a unity of science, and come towards knowledge. And build up content and logic. The logic finds that content. Um. There's, you know, phenomenology. You know, does is is in a way idealistic, but it does. A lot of the of the of, of Husserl, the phenomenology says that there is objectivity to an extent. You know, I go into you know uh, issues as to how that works within the whole theory of phenomenology. But for this purposes, he said that there is objectivity more than what psychological entities or psychological facts can reference. Uh, <clears throat> and he says that he he says that psycho that, that psychologism is not Something that is fall fallacious is not, um, it's not circular. It's not, um, it's not really, um, you know, logically wrong. It's just has many problems with it as to, you know, like as to the real ob ob objectivity that the theory of science, the, the theories of science that we um, put at our disposal, you know, um, you know, we can come to more. Ob objectivity than what than what psychology can really give us, and that's why psych psych psychologism is has very pro pro problematic for that for that very reason. Thanks. If you think I, if you think I left something out about uh, his about Husserl's anti psych psych psychologism, please comment below, and I'd love to discuss with you.